my name is James Bond and welcome to the production studio for TV Presenter for History. In April 2021, I wrote the first episode of my brand new series, Rambles Through History. Well now, six months later, I've written my 15th and subsequent episodes for release throughout the autumn and winter of 2021. Well today, I'm going to take a look back at some of my favourite moments from the first 14 episodes of Rambles Through History. So why not join me as we revisit some of these wonderful historical sites. It's here in the village where behind me we find the primary school which stands close to School House. Now this primary school is a trust primary school and it's under the trust of deed of Richard Comberbatch. Now Richard Comberbatch was born in Latchford near Lim in the year 1644 and Richard was the son of a gentleman. Now a church has stood on this site since at least the year 1269 when it was once an Ezer's chapel for nearby Great Budworth. By the 16th century this small church had increased vastly in size measuring 80 feet east to west and 40 feet wide. Upon the death of Sir John Bottler, his body was brought here to St Elphin's Church in Warrington for burial. His body was encased in a tomb, marked with a beautiful gypsum effigy. Well, what a great honour and a privilege to finally be stood here at the tomb of the 13th Baron of Warrington. For here is the final resting place of Sir John Le Bottler and his wife Lady Margaret Gerard from Kingsley. However, today all is not quite what it seems with this tomb, for it once stood in a totally different place within the church.
for it was in the year of 1947 when these two beautifully carved alabaster tomb effigies were separated using nothing more than a workman's saw. Whilst it seems so sad that this tomb had to be dismantled and moved at least twice, at least now it's back together in its rightful place here in St Elvin's Church in Warrington. It was in the 17th century when an Act of Parliament was passed called Stumping, meaning that every stone cross in Cheshire and across the country had to be brought down to a required height. Those Puritans certainly didn't like the stone crosses here in Cheshire and beyond. In the 17th century, St Edith's was to become the burial place for victims of the plague of 1625. The church records include many entries about the burials of such people, but two stand out in particular. Now one feature that I'm always looking for when visiting old churches is names etched into the glass and here at St Edith's they certainly don't disappoint for behind me in the brown wooden frame is one wonderful example. Now within this box on the glass is etched an extraordinary testimony dated right back to the 18th century. And with the help of this light, I'm going to try and show you what it says. It reads, I, Robert Aldersley, was here on the 31st day of October, 1756, with John Massey and Mr Derbyshire. It then goes on to read, NB, the roads were so bad we were in danger of our lives. St Lawrence's is a daughter church to nearby St Mary's at Rosthurn. However, St Lawrence's didn't have its own priests or vicars until the year 1556. Welcome to another episode of Rambles Through History. Now the third monument that we find here today at St Lawrence's Church is that of Philip and Ellen Mannering. Philip died in the year 1647. This beautiful tomb chest is richly carved featuring heraldic symbolism and a coat of arms of the Mannerings. The two ornate full figures of Philip and Ellen are stunning in their detail. Standing here in the North Chapel, this lovely monument, carved out of marble, was erected by his wife Ellen in 1648 as a remembrance to her beloved husband. Ellen died in nearby Nantwich, where she'd gone to live after the death of Philip. Her son, Thomas Mannering, wrote in his diary, in an entry on the 14th of October, 1656, it read, To my dear mother, who we lost, and was interred today at Piva. The oldest known grave here at Bowden is that of William Artinstall de Ringi, dated to 1617.
It was William's surname of Ringay that was to become Ringway and in the early 20th century Ringway Aerodrome was built. Today we'll all know this as Manchester International Airport. Now there's no doubt there's many interesting graves here at Bowden, but there's one grave in particular, that of William Wood, a great man with a great story to tell. Upon William's death, his coffin was carried here by six chimney suites from five different towns. It just goes to show you the rich history that remains to be told from graves such as this. It's here in the churchyard where we come across the Stanley Mausoleum, a substantial rectangular structure. It's constructed in ashlar sandstone and believed to be based on a Neo-Jacobean style. Built in 1909 and designed by Paul Phillips of London, the mausoleum contains a white marble sarcophagus containing the remains of Edward Stanley and his wife. It's certainly an imposing building and the opulence reflects the Stanley family who have been associated with Alderley since the 15th century. There's nothing more wonderful than country churches and churchyards and I for one have fell in love with them. Each churchyard is different and every churchyard tells a different story. However, they all have one thing in common and that's our local history. Time to get back out there and record more new episodes of Rambles Through History for release throughout the autumn and winter of 2021.